How do you find it? Okay. All set. All set. Yeah. Is that is that symbol going to stay there? That's on my screen. It says this meeting is being recorded because you can't see Maggie. I just had to. I just had to hit continue when it went away. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I don't have any technical support here. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine's not here, so I, oh, I don't have. No. I, I don't. I don't have a clue how to hit continue. Can I just touch it, or does I have, do I have to use the mouse or something? Uh, okay, that doesn't work. So I don't know what to do. Anyways, you all know what I look like, and I guess you can hear me. We can right? see you perfectly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Importantly, we can see Maggie. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's let's move on then. Uh, acceptance of the minutes. I think you all received a, uh, a copy of them. I move uh, accept. accept. I'm sorry, sir. I move we accept. Okay, motion has been made. Uh, can I have a second? Motion second. Made and second. Any need for discussion? There ain't no need. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Aye. Very good. Thank you. Treasurer's report. So, oops, hold on. Let me get back to. We are turning. We are finishing fiscal year 21 with $592.14 left in the grant money. $592.14. Okay. Um, $2,886.61 in the donation account and $50 and 60 cents left. And I think Carl, I think you're gonna talk about encumbrances. Yes. That, that should be after the encumbrances for the budget. Okay. Uh, all right, we'll get to that in a second. And then, because I've rolled this forward now, our fiscal year 22 budget is 1,330. So that's opened up. And then we did get a $10 deposit in August. In the donation account? Yeah, so that makes the donation up to $2,896.61. Okay. One other, I think this might be a correction. Um, in the agenda, you had the national grid bill for June, July as 1525. I believe that's supposed to be 1625. So just a typo. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. Very good. So you heard the uh, treasurer's report. I uh, have a motion to approve the treasurer's report as presented. I move we accept. All right, second. I will second. All right, any need for discussion? Any known as, uh, need for discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, very good, thank you. Uh, incoming correspondence. So I checked the mailbox today and there wasn't anything new. And okay. Was that I had already handed all of it over to you without recording it in my minutes, so I don't remember what came in. I know there was a, a okay. you know, a, a Farm Bureau thing. I yeah, don't remember a, if there was any there right to a, farm. Yeah, there wasn't a great deal. Yeah, there, there wasn't anything of major. Right. Yeah. Good. So we don't have any correspondence to discuss. <laughs> there are some AgCom emails. <laughs> okay. Why don't you tell us about those? So I'm only going to do the ones that are really pertinent. Um, there was, on June 11th, there was a um, public records access regulations update. Now, not having the old version, I don't know what changed, but just know that I think what we're doing is fine, um, you know, as far as 
allowing access to like our minutes and whatnot. Right. I know that Eloise did catch me after the last meeting and ask if I could get them uploaded faster to my town government. And I think I was explaining how we like to vote on them before I upload them. And she said, no, you should upload them and then vote on them. And if things change on the vote, then you just upload the changes. Hmm. So I don't, I don't know how anybody feels about that. I haven't done it yet. Uh, I, 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 I don't agree with that because there are some times there are a need to make some changes because of misinterpretation or whatever else. And I don't want to put information out there that, you know, is potentially not accurate because it was just a misunderstanding in the discussion. I, yeah. I, I, I don't want to post anything out online until it's, they've been approved and voted on uh, by everyone. So I kind of use the excuse that it takes me a month to get them done and out. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So as soon as they're out and we approve them uh, like we did tonight, and I'll, I'll send a copy of this to, to uh, Eloise. Yeah, uh, and she, but she was asking me for the electronic version, which I think I'm just gonna add her to the distribution list. Yeah, well, I don't, well what, I, what I can do is, since we're doing this remotely these days, you know, I can, I can send what you have sent to me uh, electronically to her. Okay. I've, done that, I've done that in the past, if that helps for your situation. So I, I, I will do that. I will send it. I will send it uh, electronically to her instead of a hard copy. Yeah, which and I'm uploading them anyway, so it's available. Publicly, yeah. so. I don't I don't I really don't want to post them. On the town's website until we have approved them. And I have it. No, I, I understand that. Yeah, OK. And, and I, I want to continue that practice because there are sometimes, especially uh, when we have situations where we have, uh, you know, other citizens participating because they, they have a concern or some subject they want to discuss with us, uh, these things have these minutes have to be uh, reviewed thoroughly before uh, they go out into the public. That's my opinion, which I'm sticking to. Okay, so uh, June fifteenth, the select board announced the rescission of the declaration of emergency for the town, the town, um, which I think we all kind of knew about anyway. June thirtieth, um, there was an email regarding the Berlin Garden near Br River Bridge, and it was basically Peter Hoffman inquiring about the contact person for the garden, which somebody from I think it was the select board told them it was you, Carl. Yes, we will, we will discuss I'm sure, that. I'm sure that's coming. I know that's yeah. coming up, but we'll, yeah, I think it's just related that, to this. That came up time. yesterday, and, and, and I must have received eight emails on the subject. But we'll yes, <laughs> and some of those are in here too, so. Okay. Um, a new thing, and this I, I couldn't tell if this was a brand new organization or if it was just a new newsletter that somehow landed in our you know, all the spam that we get from, it's not really spam, but all these newsletters we get from whatever agriculture or conservation districts or whatever. Um, but it's called Massachusetts Open Space Network. So there's a, I just wanted to point out there is a new newsletter that apparent, and it was their July newsletter. So apparently we're gonna start getting this again. So I, I didn't really look at it that closely because there was like a slew of emails and just trying to get through them. But um, I don't know if anybody, is at all interested in that, just let me know and I can forward to you if you can take a look. Um, July 8th, the select board made an announcement for fiscal, new for fiscal year 2022. Um, room reservations for the second floor meeting rooms are now self-serve. Right. Which is kind of moot because of another announcement coming up, but just to let everybody know that they are self-serve now. Um, right. So I guess that means you just go in and, you know, write your name down or whatever. Yeah, I, I think what the, the intent there is, I, I, I haven't been down, but I believe posted outside the rooms is the is the various schedules. Yeah. We, we have we have our schedule and we would write in what days we want uh, to reserve the rooms for. Uh, we will discuss that a little bit later on. Uh, I This came up, this subject kind of came up in a different form after I publish the agenda. So I will be addressing this uh, under new business uh, regarding future future meetings for our organization. Okay. 
So I'll be discussing that at that time. Okay. Um, July 12th, there was an email related to the transition of the highway superintendent facilities director position and short staff and the account accounting staff is going to take over admin and all that kind of stuff. So just yeah. I on, that, that. on that subject, uh, apparently we still do, do not have a highway superintendent. Correct. And uh, Margaret has asked that if there's any kind of a need for any organization for services, that they those requests go through her and not directly to other departments, such as the highway department. And in particular, the highway department, because they are shorthanded and, right, right. and they don't have a, uh, a a manager in place at this time. So uh, we can't, we can no longer go directly to the highway department for any requests. They have to go via, via Margaret. So. Right. Okay. Um, July 19th, I'm pretty sure we are all set with this, but I just wanted to mention it um, from the select board. They are following up from the June 2nd email, which was seeking contact information for all appointed board and committee members. I'm pretty sure they have all of our contact information. Well, right. I, ha I have uh, that on the, uh, the agenda too, uh, on the new business. There is a form to fill out. And it's pretty straightforward, but before I filled it out and sent it in, I just want to touch base with everybody. So again, we'll, we'll discuss that in a bit. Okay. Uh, August 5th um, from Margaret was the reinstatement of face covering mandate in the town buildings and vehicles and continuance of virtual meetings, which is what kind of negates the sign up. But I guess it doesn't, maybe not for the whole year, but anyway, yeah. As of yesterday, face coverings are mandated again in the town. Building. Right, right. Um, August 6th was an announcement from the treasurer's office about Dennis going off on a conference and his assistant going out on vacation. So there's some shifts for this, just this week, I think, was the shift. And yeah, then, for, for purposes of collecting taxes and things like that. Yeah, well, coverage. yes, yes, yes. And he was talking, he was, he, part of it had to do with payroll too. So he was just trying right. to make sure that everybody knew that that was covered. Right. Um, on August 9th, and again, I know that we're going to have more discussion about this, but it was the note, this was yesterday in, in those flying emails that were coming through um, from the select board that uh, related to the the town garden, how Jason Rowell had um, requested information about, you know, the, the map for the community garden property. Um, and I made a note here that Carl sent him the grid layout for the community garden. And then on August 9th, and Carl, I noticed that you forwarded this to all of us too, but it was that local working group feedback form. Yes. So that, that wasn't on my agenda because it just came in. Uh, I've yeah. added it to the agenda and we will discuss that momentarily. Okay, good. Because I, I took a brief look at the form and I wasn't sure how to, what to do with it. So yeah, okay. Yeah, you're not alone. So we, will be, <laughs> we will discuss that shortly. Okay. All right. That's All right. it for emails. That's it. That's All enough. Right. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody have any questions, concerns, or want anything uh, forwarded to you? All right, so let's move on to whole business. So we've had this in place for a while and we probably have to continue leaving it there. Uh, additional security requirements at the community garden. Uh, with respect to our grant money, by the time we get the new roof on the uh, garden shed, uh, there's gonna be very little left uh, in that account. So if we wanna go forward, with any kind of additional security cameras down there, uh, they would have to come out of our donation account. Uh, is this something we wanna continue to pursue? Uh, these would be uh, video type cameras uh, versus the cameras that uh, we currently have down there. Uh, the ones are sort of like critic cameras that, that are uh, available down at the garden at the moment. So what are your thoughts? Do you want, do we want to continue uh, 
pursuing and looking into the purchase of a, uh, a video type of uh, uh, camera situation. And if so, it would have to be funded out of the donation account. There's no money in FY22 and there is not enough money left in the grant uh, account once the uh, roof is installed. Any comments, observations, questions? I, I think we need something more serious down there. Um, and I think we can wait until next year. We just need to get the current cameras up and running for the rest of the season. Okay. Um, but James had sent to me, um, he had sent a camera that he had been looking at it. And, and I was gonna ask him tonight, the camera that you sent me, I didn't see a price on it. Um, when I was reading through all the stuff about it, but it had, it looked like it had four cameras, which would be perfect to put on the different parts of the, the shed. If, is that right, James, that it would, are they four, were they four separate cameras that we could put one yeah, on the sides? I, I think that setup was, um, it, there's like an eight channel receiver that comes with four cameras. And so you could conceivably put eight cameras on it, maybe. I, I have to look at that one again, but four seems like it would be all that we would ever need. Um, I think the total price on that was like 250 bucks. It was, I think it was under 300. So um, comes with a one terabyte hard drive. So it would all be contained within the, the shed. Um, and it would just overwrite whatever old footage was on there. So you'd have at least a few days worth of material that you could go back and look at if there was an incident. So. Okay, and since the garden has gotten so much bigger, I, I do think we need to to surround that shed with a camera from each side, maybe two in the front. Um, it, they need to be up. So I'm hoping, James, you can get those cameras up. I know the weather's been bad. Yeah, I'll get, I'll get those up. The um, blueberry yeah, season's over now, so I'll have time to get down there and have fun with them. Yeah, we're, starting, we're starting to have theft. Yeah, I was just going to say, this is the season when the tomatoes start to get ripe and the cucumbers are available and the <laughs> freeloaders are out there helping themselves. So uh, let's uh, let's see if we can't get those in place. That would be good. You yeah, know, figured, Debbie, you mentioned, it's, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, it's it's going to be toasty the next two days, so or three days, four days. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're not going to be doing much in the afternoon around the farm, so I can probably go down there and get them set up. Okay. Do you need the information again, the change of the, um, the, uh, I, think I, have all the that. I, I left the cameras on the shelf on the right at yep. the very back in a basket, but do you want me to email you that combo again? I think I still have the email. With okay. you. I'll, I'll shoot you an email if I run into trouble. Okay, perfect. And I did leave batteries for one of the cameras up there. I don't, I yeah, yeah, can't yeah. remember. Um, so that would be great. One on yeah. the front, one on, I don't know, maybe even put both of them on the front at the garden at this point yeah. or something that at least gets the parking lot and then mm -hmm. something that gets the back of the, you know, towards more the back of the garden. Yeah, the big one gets the parking lot. So maybe we'll play with the little one. Okay. That and James, awesome. James as, I, as I recall, uh, I think, did you not purchase some uh, kind of a electronic extension cords or something that the, the we big can one has a power cord? So it, that okay. that one doesn't need batteries anymore. Okay. The little one um, still does, but that one. The problem with is that the big one is a bit indiscriminate as to what triggers it. So the traffic on the road tends to set it off, especially at night. So um, it. Uh, it it would burn through the batteries real fast. Whereas the other one is it behaves itself a little bit better. So <laughs> it's not as much of a problem. So that one that yeah. one, the batteries in that tend to last for six months or so. So is that bigger one you're talking about, the the hunting one that would it yeah. be better and that has a wider range. Is that one better off in the front of the shed and then the other one on the side to catch the parking lot? I think that that one the big one we had by the door which seemed to do a pretty, because that covers the whole garden plus the parking lot, um, as long as somebody trips it. Okay. Yeah, it may not get the far side of the garden, but 
people are restricted. You'll, I don't know if you've been down I mean, there. Restricted. It, it shoots and, like 170 degrees. So it's basically anything that's that side of the shed, it's going to catch. Okay. People can only go in, in uh, three, on the front of the garden and on both sides. Yep. So I think that's where we'd need to kind of train it to, to we'd at least see people who don't belong there going in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the biggest limitation of it is that um, the motion sensor doesn't necessarily see through the entire garden once things grow up. So mm -hmm. um, it uh, it needs something to kind of set it off, but it covers most of the place. So okay, well that'll be great if you can get that up this week. So Deborah, you had mentioned uh, we could wait uh, until next season for the uh, video security uh, requirements. Uh, you know, if you've seen a, a brochure on it that James has provided you with, and if you're satisfied that it comes with four cameras, uh, I'd like to make a motion uh, we proceed with the purchase of it, or perhaps James mentioned a, a fund somewhere between 250 and 300 and I would like to make a motion that we go ahead and make the procurement uh, not to exceed 350, just to give it a little margin there in case there's been a price change or something like that. And we can take it off the agenda and we can get it installed. I mean, we still have potential issues, uh, you know, throughout the year for, for vandalism and stuff like that. So I, I think the sooner we get it in place, uh, the better off we'd be. Uh, so we could, uh, as I mentioned, fund this. We have adequate funds, uh, certainly in the donation account. So I'd like to uh, make a motion that uh, we ask James to make the procurement and not to exceed uh, $350 for this video, four camera video set uh, to be funded out of uh, the AgComs donation account. I think second. Okay, motion to make a second. Need for discussion. All in favor? Aye. All right, let's do it. Sounds good. I'll uh, I'll send an email around with a link to the system so everyone can take a look before. Okay, very good, thank you. All right, so uh, the next item on the agenda on the old business, uh, but he's not here and we discussed it the last time we met, he intends to do the uh, reshingling uh, once the weather cools down, late summer, early fall. Uh, Deborah, I want to ask you, did you happen to notice by chance whether the uh, the solar panel is still on the roof of the of the garden shed? Uh, the last time, I, last time I looked it was probably in, I don't know, late June, early July, it was okay. still there. But I, I didn't, I was down there today. I didn't, I didn't look. You had sent me an email saying it was leaking when we were having all that rain back in July. Right. Where the uh, hardware penetrates the, uh, the roof to hold on the panel. I had sent an email to the highway department and asked them to remove it. And that was just during the transition with our mm -hmm. highway superintendent leaving. So, uh, I will, when Buddy's about ready to uh, commence with the shingling, if it's still there at that time, I will uh, either contact our new highway superintendent or go through Margaret to ask for it to be removed. Uh, they're gonna take custody of it anyways because they have the rest of the components already stored at the highway department for potential use at some point uh, up in, uh, at the North Cemetery. Okay, so. I guess that covers that subject adequately. Any when other? I go to the garden, Carl, when I go to the garden tomorrow, I'll take a look and confirm that it's still there for you. Yeah. All right. Very good. Uh, again, we have on the, on the old business community garden uh, fee schedules. I think the last time we met, we said we would postpone that until, you know, we get into the fall and winter season and, Deborah, you have an opportunity to make some recommendations at that time. So uh, I think we ought to just leave that as, as it stands at the moment. That's okay with everybody. Uh, Deborah, have you heard any uh, 
additional word from this uh, pharmaceutical corporation? Uh, it has gone to um, dead air. I emailed just saying, just, you know, what's going on? Did you go in another direction, whatever? And there was not a response. So I okay. assume you went in another direction because she was very aggressive about calling me and emailing me right. initially. So it, it, they just must have gone in another direction. So unfortunately, okay. that sounded like a great thing, but. Well, that's the way it goes. Yep, exactly. So, so that being the status, then I'm gonna remove this from the agenda for the next meeting as, okay. uh, as being concluded. If it comes up again, we'll add it again. Okay. So the next item, uh, security light re replacements. We have two broken lights uh, on the garden shed. If you were standing in front of the garden shed, it's the two on the end wall on the left. And I think we also discussed at one of our last meetings that at the time Buddy puts the uh, new roof on, that would be the time to replace those. So it's just there to keep it uh, up front to remind us that we need to accomplish that. Uh, I think I reported the last time that water was getting into one of them. So that's not a good mix to have electricity and the water together. So uh, that's the status on that particular item. Moving on to the new business, uh, community guidance status report. Deborah, do you like to enlighten us? Yeah, just a couple of things. Um, I following up on uh, what Laura said about the um, donation, the last, that $10 that went in, that was the final payment from every single gardener, which um, gave us a total of $926.60, which seems kind of funny, but I think one of the gardeners who left wiped out a bank account and just said, pay it to the community garden because that, that was Roger who was awesome. And he ended up moving to Oregon. And I think he just made a final donation to us. So that's oh, 60 cents in the, you know, 926.60 was what um, came in this year. The um, uh, garden is starting to do donations to the food pantry. Nobody stepped up when I requested somebody manage that. And so they're kind of do, there's a, there's, as always, there's a core group of people who do everything. So right. they are handling it and taking things to the food pantry. And I'm going to be checking in with Mary McKelk um, probably tomorrow about how that's going. Um, and, and how it's working. But I, I was with her early, or spoke to her earlier to how to facilitate it because I went over on a Saturday, she wanted us to leave it in that little vestibule. I was like, we can't leave produce in that vegetable uh, vestibule. If you've ever walked into there midday, it's like 150 degrees. So last Saturday I went over to do something else and the door was locked. It's supposed to be open 10 to two, it says on the door. So. Um, I guess they've been finding a way to get in and make a donation. But anyway, that's working. Um, Carl, you, I was just there briefly today because somebody had asked me to look at something and uh, I didn't have a chance to look to see if the, where the tank wrap was that you said you dropped off. Is it right over by the? Um, okay, so uh, if, if, no, if you uh, walk into the shed and Walk to the left, the outer wall is a set of shelves up there. And I think there was some ground cover up there. I put it up on that shelf. Okay, all right. Well, I'll be looking for somebody to take care of that this week. Um, Excuse me, let me just fill in everybody else in case you're not aware. So sometime back, uh, Deborah had informed me that the water tank in the shed was uh, sweating because of the extreme heat and spraying a lot of water on the, on the a shed floor with uh, the potential of rotting it out. And at one of our last meetings, we agreed, uh, I believe, or I sent an email out, whatever it was, I, I don't recall now. And I recommended buying uh, some insulation, just like the insulation they use for a hot water heater. And uh, I think you all authorized me $100. So the other day, I finally went out and I purchased one of those insulating jackets, if you will, that was, can be used on a hot water heater. And it costs $26.48, which is 
for which I will be seeking reimbursement, filling out the forms and getting your signature to get reimbursed for that. So I think uh, that might help by uh, eliminating, uh, you know, the hot air being in direct contact with the, the coal tank. If that doesn't work, th this is the low cost solution. If that doesn't work, an alternative would be in very early next spring, uh, we can purchase from Lowe's uh, either a galvanized or a vinyl pan uh, that's about I guess it looks somewhere between two and three inches in depth and what a water with a water spout on it or a water valve, if you will. And it can be placed under the uh, water tank in the shed and collect any condensation. And we can have a drain uh, from the pan that goes out of the shed. So it will keep the water off the floor. But that would require, uh, first of all, an empty water tank and then uh, removing the inlet and the outlet uh, piping, raising the tank and putting the pan underneath it. So if the highway department is up and running uh, in the springtime and if this solution, that temporary solution doesn't work adequately, we can probably consider putting one of those pans under it. I saw the pans when I was picking up this insulation. I didn't get the price on, but I can't imagine that they're very expensive. And if we can get the labor done by the highway department, that would solve that issue. So that's what that's about. Sorry, Deborah. That's okay. Um, I don't. I don't know if the rest of the group knows about the problem we've had with the fencing, because I've really just talked to Carl about it. But yeah. um, we the the temporary fencing went up, and then the bunnies we are having uh, they're wreaking havoc in the garden, and I feel they've probably moved in, why would they leave once they're in there? Um, and they're just mowing down people's things. <laughs> so we tried uh, to set up a crew to repair the holes, but as soon as the holes were repaired, they were chewing right through it. We brought in galvanized stuff, but they would just keep moving. So eventually uh, people were donating chicken wire and everything to to put around and you know bury into the mulch so they couldn't get through. But um, unfortunately, one of the gardeners did this while I was away, um, put up, brought in a bunch of uh, chicken wire with two inch openings. And I was at the garden a week ago and I watched a bunny basically come up to the fence, wiggle right through it, wiggle right through the other, it was a small bunny obviously, and right into the garden. Two days later, I went over, I opened the gate, out of nowhere, this bunny shot right through the gate and into the garden. So um, unfortunately, the we were not expecting the bunny population this year. <laughs> uh, there there, there seems there, to be, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, 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 didn't... I just said, I've heard they're everywhere, people are, saying they're everywhere. Yeah, there, there does seem to be an explosion of rabbits this year for whatever reason. I know that's what they do naturally, but it seems to be out of control uh, more this year. I've had more customers uh, complain about that situation and I've seen more on my farm here than I have in a good number of years. So I don't know whether it was a fairly mild winter or what it was, but there is certainly an explosion of, of rabbits and uh, I'm, I was very surprised uh, that they would be as aggressive as to eat through uh, the fencing uh, to get on the inside, but uh, that's the situation. So I don't know uh, at the moment if there's anything more we can do other than stay vigilant and try to keep the, uh, the fence repaired as best we can. Yeah, well, right now it's totally surrounded in chicken wire, but unfortunately the chicken wire that is around a good portion of it has the two inch openings, which Too is big. gonna keep the bigger bigger ones out, right. not the little ones. And again, I think there's probably a family living right in the garden. I can't imagine that they'd wanna leave once they got in. So um, I think later on, maybe next month, we need to discuss whether we're taking that fence down now is gonna be a nightmare the way right. it's wrapped in the chicken wire. Um, I'll take a better look at it now that I'm home and see 
you know, how much of a nightmare it's going to be, but we may have to consider something else in fencing. Okay. Take a look <clears throat> next time down the garden, take a look to see if they're living underneath the uh, shed. I was figuring that they might be. So what would I, uh, not being a rabbit person, what would I be looking for, Kevin, to know that they're living under there? Well, you'd, you'd, you'd see a hole that goes down into the ground. Okay, so, but if- You'd see, you'd see where they've pawed it up or chewed it up and you see a mound of dirt. Okay, so I'll get a flashlight then and try to shine it under there and see what I can see. Okay. The hole could even be within the garden too. I mean, they will live in the middle of the lawn. Okay. Without, without having shelter above it because they're, they're digging their den underneath, under the ground. Okay. So I'm gonna look for uh, about how big is the hole that I'm looking for. Uh, it doesn't like, have to be all that big, you know, like maybe two, three inches. Yeah. Only three inches? Sometimes I've seen them. How, Kevin, what are you saying there? <laughs> He's saying this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, really. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that's, maybe that's yeah, I don't know. If you, if you find the hole, maybe we'll purchase a uh, have a heart trap, put some peaches in it, put that right up to the hole and Okay, well, the, one of the gardeners did put a have, have a heart trap in there, but we're like, why are you putting a have a heart trap in the middle of the garden when there's already free stuff everywhere? <laughs> well, if you put in, if you put in peaches or something, they, they may draw them right in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll see if I can find where the, it, I think it was kind of a bigger trap too, but I'll, I'll see what's, what's going on. And then am I going to have a heart? Where am I taking them? You're taking them right to, you're gonna, you're gonna fill up a 50 gallon bucket and drop it right in there. Okay. What's happening all? It is, uh, let me mention, it is illegal in this state to transport any wild relocate animals. Relocate them, yeah. Or relocate them, so we can't do that. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. So I'll have to find somebody else to have a heart. <laughs> okay, anything else, Deborah? Um, one thing, and I think it'll probably really come under new business, is I have a, a group that wants to um, repaint the picnic table. They've, they've been working on it. They've got it shored up. They were going to uh, complete sanding it. And then I just needed permission to buy a gallon of the stain to redo it. So um, that would be it. But we can do that under new business if you like. Okay. Let's, let's move. We accept. We accept that. All right. We can, we can take it. We can discuss it now. We're here. With, uh, okay. So you're going to need a gallon. Of, are you sure it's stain or is it paint? Do you know? Uh, I have the stuff in the other room. I went to Lowe's and already asked the paint person uh, okay. what he would recommend for our purpose, and it was a Cabot. Um, I don't. A, I can't remember. I think it was a My, stain. Because I had asked Buddy what he had used. And did he say it was a stain? I, yeah. Oh, you're really making me remember this from so long ago. <laughs> well, the, the okay. only, I, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. The only concern I have is if it, if it was painted, we ought to use paint. If it was stained, we should use stain. But well, we just got to know which, which one. That's okay. my opinion. That's but he all. did tell me he didn't like what he used. But I can, I know exactly where the thing is if you, I can be back in 10. No, 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 no. That's all right. That, no, it doesn't matter which one you, you, I don't, I don't care whether you use stain or, or paint. It, we ought to just be consistent with whatever was used initially. It doesn't matter. And there's no, okay. no, no major price change. All right. I will make sure that I make sure it gets the right thing. Finish. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. And I think that it costs something like twenty-seven, twenty-eight dollars. Right. And, you, and you're going to need you're going to need a brush too. I know there's a brush in the shed, but okay. yes, probably a, just in case that one isn't right. Yeah, money okay. to be able to purchase a proper brush for it. So, can I amend Kevin's motion to say uh, I'd like to move that uh, we authorize Deborah to ex to expend. And again, that's come out of the donation account because we don't have any room in our FY22 account, not to exceed $50 for uh, stain slash paint uh, for the picnic table and associated materials such as brushes. Is that okay? Yep. 
Have a second. Definitely. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Okay. Very good. All right. Very good. Anything else? I think that's all I got. Okay. Uh, next item. Uh, again, I'm just obligated to let you know, since I have the signing authority for these little things, that uh, I processed the invoices for National Grid uh, payments as indicated there. And as uh, was pointed out earlier, apparently we have a typo there. One of them should be 1625 and not 1525. So those uh, invoices were uh, signed off and sent in to uh, our town accountant for, for payment. Uh, next item, uh, welcome to Berlin sign uh, at the community garden. So this started back on the 5th of July. Uh, this was precipitated by the economic development, uh, I don't know if it's corporation or company or whatever. Commission, thank you, uh, within town. And uh, I received a, an email from uh, this gentleman by the name of Jason uh, about asking to put up a, a sign at the community garden. So I went back to him on the same day and said, generally speaking, I believe the ICOM uh, has no issue with putting up a, a welcome sign to Berlin. Uh, However, I wanted to present this to the full membership so we could vote on it. And I told him our next meeting was this evening. I also asked what I thought was some reasonable straightforward questions like, what's the size? Uh, other than welcome to Berlin, is it gonna say anything else on the sign? Uh, and I pointed out that we have a, a community garden sign up by the road and would the sign be put there or down in the parking lot or, or, or other location? I also asked, uh, he mentioned about the plot plan and I told him that that's available at the assessor's office referring to the seven acres that are down there. And I also said we have a garden uh, uh, plot layout. And uh, I also asked what type of sign they intended, wood, metal or whatever. And he never responded until yesterday. And yesterday he said he, the assessors didn't have the plot sign. Well. Seven or eight emails later, between the town administrator, uh, Jason Gentleman, uh, the assessor's office, uh, and I don't know who else, uh, he find, the assessors uh, sent him a copy of the plot plan for the seven acres. And I forwarded to him the, the plot plan for the garden uh, that I received from Deborah. And the garden plot plan is nothing more than, as you know, the matrix with people's names in it, that are finding who has what plots. So I haven't heard anything more. So at the moment, as far as I'm concerned, then we get additional information. Uh, this subject is tabled and it will be put under uh, old business until we uh, get further clarification. You know, uh, again, I don't object to it. I, I think we just need to know where it's going to go, what it's going to look like, and what it's going to say. I think those are reasonable requests. Anybody got any other comments or concerns about that? Okay. Moving on to the next subject. Uh, select board requests for uh, contact information. So they sent me uh, an email uh, back in July 19th, I guess, and we have to respond to it. Uh, sometime this month. And basically what they want to know is who's on the committees, uh, what are the positions, and uh, what are the uh, appropriate contact information, you know, cell phones and stuff like that. Does anybody have any objection to me uh, submitting this to the select board? Nope. Okay. So that's, that's basically what they're looking for, just so they have uh, I know the open lines of communication who to contact if they need to. So I will take care of that and submit that by the due date. I need to put a light on here. Excuse me a second. It's getting dark. Okay, that's a little better. All right. Uh, next item, no smoking at the community garden. So 
there have been people smoking down there. Uh, Deborah brought this to my attention. Other than, in addition to the obvious uh, negative health uh, situation of uh, secondhand smoke, etc., there's also the concern uh, for uh, the mosaic, tobacco mosaic potential affecting the plants. So I went to the administrator and said, we're gonna put up no smoking signs. Is there any problem with that? Nope. And I got an, uh, an email back from her saying no. And she also sent one to the Board of Health and the Board of Health said, no, no problem. So we're gonna be erecting some uh, no smoking signs, uh, one inside the uh, community shed, one on the outside door of the community shed and at the entranceways uh, to the garden, as well as on our kiosk down there, our bulletin board kiosk. So we're gonna be uh, putting those up shortly. And I did speak directly face to face to the two offenders that people had complained about. So okay. they, they know they're not supposed to smoke in the garden. And All hopefully right. they are respecting that. Very good. Uh, sometime back in July, I got a phone call. Did I get a phone call? Yeah, I guess it was a phone call from one of the gardeners uh, bringing to my attention. I guess I get this. Did I get that from you, Deborah? I, I, yeah, I, she I called track. I've been so busy, I lost track of time. And then I called you. Yeah, to, okay. To find Thank out you. what you do. Right. Thank you. So there were. Once again, people using the uh, land down there as a landing strip and taking off with ultralights. And uh, it's my understanding, and nobody's told me otherwise, that that conservation land, the seven acres, is to be used for farming and other passive recreation. Passive being you know, bird watching, taking a hike, walking a dog, or whatever. And, and it's not to be used for motorized vehicles. So. I called uh, our local police department, brought it to their attention. Officer Goody went down and spoke to them uh, and they left. Uh, the next day I had a conversation uh, with the chief and he was gonna uh, have a further conversation with our town administrator on the subject. That's the last I've heard So at the moment. It apparently is a non-issue and hopefully it won't be a recurring recurring uh, issue. Any other questions on that or comments? Okay. Next item, uh, the comments list. At the end of every fiscal year, we get a uh, notice from the town accountant asking us if there are any outstanding bills that we're gonna have to pay after the June 30th uh, end of the fiscal year. And I identified to her uh, two potential uh, electric light bills, uh, one for the, the June, the May-June timeframe and the other one for the June-July timeframe. And there was about 50 some odd dollars remaining in our FY21 account. Uh, so I identified that on the incumbents list and we came back that the May-June one would be paid uh, out of the uh, FY21, but the July one uh, would have to go into the uh, FY22 account. So we left on the table out of our FY21 account. I don't have an exact number, but it was some perhaps somewhere around 40 some odd dollars or thereabouts. I think it was 50 and some change. 50 and some change. Okay. Small amount. Um, $50 and 60 cents is what I came up with. Okay. All right. So. So we, we, we stay within our budget and we gave back to the taxpayers the $50 and 60 some odd cents. So that's what that's all about. Uh, also want to, uh, next item, uh, again, uh, I processed the invoices to uh, pay the Balance Rock uh, Farm the $900 for the cultivating and, and uh, things of that nature at the community garden and also the Robinson Hardware, one for $9.49, and to reimburse Deborah, $26.99 for the uh, bailing twine she needed to lay out the plots uh, back in May at the community garden. So 
those were all signed off by me and submitted to the uh, town accountant for payment. Uh, all of those uh, came out of our FY21 account. Okay, so that covers the agenda items that I published. And as I mentioned, a couple of things have come up. Uh, getting back to the subject we raised about future meetings. I think with the uh, uptick in the COVID that we're seeing and the requirement to wear masks within the uh, town offices, I think it's prudent uh, that we perhaps continue with uh, uh, the Zoom meetings that we've been having. Uh, also, you know, it won't be long before we're into winter conditions and we can still have our meetings if it's snowing out or whatever what have you, uh, the, the weather won't uh, call for a cancellation. So if you are in agreement with that, I need to inform the select board that that's what we intend to do in order to host and schedule the uh, various Zoom meetings for the, the rest of our, our current year schedule. Is that acceptable to everybody or do you have any other comments or recommendations? Acceptable. All right. Hearing no negatives, I guess we'll proceed on that basis then. Okay, and I guess the last thing I have, again, this was mentioned earlier uh, by Laura. It's an email that we got from the Department of Agriculture. What did I do with it? Hold on a second, folks. Let me just go through this stack of paper here. You want me to call it up and? Well, you, you might have to do that. Uh, I should have it here. I thought I had it quite handy. I have it on my screen, so. Okay, basically what it is, it's a survey an agriculture survey. They sent it out to most farms. Oh, okay. Did you get it directly from them? Yes, I did. Come out. Yeah. I only got it from the agricultural. Uh, the yeah. um, I think Elaine must have picked it up from address. That's interesting. I wondered where you got it because you weren't listed there. <laughs> okay. Well, I apologize. I, I misplaced it. I'm sorry. I have it in this stack someplace. I'll find it 10 minutes after the, me the meeting is over. But anyways, it's a, a very lengthy, uh, somewhat lengthy survey and very technical in nature. There are a lot of terms in there that clearly I don't understand, quite frankly. And it has to do with conservation, land and water and things of that nature. And they cite references. If you don't understand what it means, go look it up here and go look it up there, which I certainly do not have the time to do at this time of year. And, uh, and the deadline is Friday, by the way. Oh, yeah. And the deadline, of course, is Friday. And it's from the Department of Agriculture, I believe, out of the Holden office. And sorry. There, it sounded Laura, like Laura, could you could you just read briefly what it says so the folks know? I don't sure. know. Sure. Deal with it. Sure. It. So, it's basically six pages of questions. Um, Central Massachusetts 2021 Local Working Group Questionnaire. We would like to gather specific feedback and input that will be used in funding and allocation decisions for NRCS programs in 2022. Please return the survey by August 13th. If there are questions you prefer not to respond to, you can leave them blank. Please send your completed form to, and there's a uh, email address. And I think the reason that they're, they're gathering this information is in preparation for their, some meeting that they're having next week that this is gonna come up at. So if anybody's super interested, they can go to the meeting and you know discuss it there too, but. And some of the, you know, some of the, the, like, I'm just looking at the first few questions. 
what Massachusetts counties and local service center are you representing? What trends in agriculture and or forestry production and wildfire, I'm sorry, wildlife conservation do you see occurring within your area? Um, you know, what is the biggest resource concern you see in your county or region of Massachusetts? What do you see as emerging conservation related technologies that should be encouraged? It goes on. I mean, it's just like. And, and there are a couple, like I say, some of the terms that they use, I don't know if you can identify one or just as an example, but some of the um, terminology is highly technical and I have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah, well, like the, under, like what is the biggest resource concern you see in your county or region of Massachusetts? It says reference the resource concern mass handout. Right. Um, and then, yeah, there was a whole chart in here about for forest land about air quality emissions, aquatic habitat, uh, soil erosions and um, Let's see, please check up to 10 conservation practices you feel are most important. And this is all for forest land. So, I mean, there's a lot of it that can be skipped, but I'm not really sure how it applies to us as a commission. Right, so my recommendations, folks, I like to pass. We're not under any obligation to respond to it. And again, I don't think in the time allotted and the research one would have to do I don't think we could give a productive response anyways. In that no, time we, would, we would have to sit down as a group and go exactly. through each question exactly. and his opinion. And I don't see us doing that. Right. And also in order to accomplish that under the some of the terms that they suggest you go research if you don't understand them, that would have to be done first. <laughs> And yeah. again, I personally don't have the time to do that this time of year, sorry. So it's my recommendation. Again, it, it, it's not a mandatory type of thing. We're not obligated to respond. We're, we we can do something like that on a straightforward ma manner. I don't mind doing it. And if they want us to do it, they got to give us more time. That's all there is to it. You can't do it in five right. days. Yeah. Right. right. So, so, and I, I will point out that Carl forwarded this to all of us, I believe. Yeah, right. I've got or it. I should say Elaine oh. forwarded it to all of yeah. us. Yeah, okay, <laughs> rub it in. <laughs> um, so yeah, if, anybody, right. if anybody wanted to take the time to do it individually from their own personal, you know, opinion, go for it. <laughs> Fill it out and send it to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and share it now, next I have to get my wife to send it to you because I don't know how to do that. <laughs> yeah, me either. <laughs> so again, folks, my recommendation is that we pass on this one because, again, the time constraints and and the, and the activity it would take to uh, to do the research is just prohibitive. Anybody have any objection to that? Nope. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, I think uh, I have covered everything that I have on the agenda. Uh, you got community garden insurance coverage. What's that? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Good point. Sorry. I did this one. Yeah. Okay. So the selectmen came out. Uh, apparently they do this periodically once a year. The insurance company uh, for the town says, you know, what do you, what do you want to add or subtract from your insurance coverage? So they sent us, they sent me an inquiry and I responded saying that, uh, you might want to consider uh, insurance coverage for the following. The community garden shed, uh, I pegged that at $6,000. And the personal property uh, in the shed, uh, I, I pegged that at an additional $4,500. I mean, we got the water tank in there. We got the uh, uh, electrical panel in there. The lights are in there plus his personal property in there as well. So that was a ballpark that I thought was reasonable. And I also suggested uh, uh, $2,000 uh, for the well pump uh, with the rationale uh, that well pumps are subject to damage from potential lightning strikes. So those are my recommendations uh, as far as insurance coverage is concerned for the property that we have down there. 
and whether they included it and forwarded it to the insurance company, I have no idea. So that's what that's all about. Those were my recommendations. Okay. Sounds good to me. All right. Any other questions? I, I couldn't think of anything else. I think those cover everything. I think the numbers that I came up, came up with based on my personal experience were, were reasonable in, in the ballpark. Not, they, not that anybody can steal those raised beds now that they're all. Um, yeah, I don't think we'd have to worry about that. Don't <laughs> yeah. worry about those. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I did that thought did enter my mind, but you know. With the weight that's in there from the soil and everything, uh, and and it's in the realm of things, really not that much money. But okay, well, unless it was a fire. Well, they're outside. I mean, I mean, it would have to be a grass fire, but even yeah, that, they are metal. Oh, some of them are metal. That's true. Yeah, yeah six of them are six of them are metal, and right. two are wooden. No, four of them are wooden. We got the yeah. two new ones from Dave. I, I I made the conscious decision not to not to include them. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> what about the actual well? That doesn't need any type of insurance. No, I mean that's I, that's I, worth you know twelve thousand or whatever it was. Yeah, it was about fifteen thousand, but you know okay. it's not going to burn. Right. It's not going to be destroyed by wind. It's not going to be stolen. <laughs> it's not going to be stolen. <laughs> and the worst that can happen is it gets polluted, and I don't think that would be covered. Okay. So that's why I only I only included the pump because they can be hit by lightning on occasion. Sure. It's rare, but can happen. So, so I let I let the board of selection decide what they want to do with it, and I don't know what the end result was. That's fine. I don't, they asked for an input, and I, I provided them. Okay, so did I miss anything else on the agenda? I got everything now. Thank you for catching that, Kevin. Sorry, I missed it. Any other comments, questions, concerns, complaints? I just wanna put something out for people to think about for when I bring this back um, after I finish all the research I'm doing on the other community gardens in the area and uh, how much they charge and the size of their plots and everything. Um, my, uh, my goal is to get the rules and regulations streamlined a little bit more because I'm feeling people are not even looking at them. They're just signing the back page and they're not paying attention. Part of that is because they're way still too wordy and they need to be bulleted out better. So I'm working on that and fixing the application next year, but I can't do the application until we talk about the fees and to consider um, if we are gonna still let gardeners from other towns apply if there are plots available, um, raising the fees uh, on them more than what the Berlin gardeners are paying. So um, I want people to think about that um, a couple of different things there. And then the other thing is, if you have a chance and you're driving by, if you'll just swing down and look at the garden this year, if you haven't done that, and take a look and tell me if you think it might be an option to consider to leave the fence as it is right now and not take it down and have people, like, they did a really good job this year doing the mulching between the paths. It's the best it's ever been. And would it be okay to consider that not, or at least try it as an experiment, not cultivating the entire area this year, making the people break down the plots. And then when they come back in the spring, all the pathways are basically still in place and they're responsible for their own individual plots and cultivating it however they want. Cause Carl donated a rototiller so it's available, people could rototill their own plot or they could do the no-till thing that a lot of people are doing. Um, it's just stuff I want you to kind of think about to help me make the recommendations when I bring this all back for next year. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes, it does, yeah. it does. And, and you know, I have been down there a few times this summer and uh, I have to say the, the garden looks outstanding. Yeah. Uh, the way it's been, uh, 
organized and maintained and, and uh, what appears to be uh, a good productive year because the, all the rain and everything was helped plus the water system we now have helps too. It makes so, a huge difference. Yeah, yeah, it, it looks it looks terrific. It really does, it looks great. But yes, I will, I will think about that and I'll ask everybody else to uh, take those thoughts in, in mind too. Yeah, and, I've been gathering a lot of information from the other um, towns around us, all their rules and okay, fees and good. applications. All right, good. Uh, one of the things I would say about the tiller you mentioned, it's not a very large tiller and uh, that is quite a large area. Uh, don't know how many people would want to use it, but uh, that's just something to consider. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, uh, we certainly need to get uh, Buddy's input, you know, uh, who's been doing the cultivating down there to see if he's got, you know, recommendations as well. So. Yeah, and I think in, in the long run too, we need to look at getting a permanent fence. Almost all okay. the other gardens I'm looking at have permanent fencing in place. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, we can we can certainly consider that. Uh, it's uh, well, all right. We'll leave it at that. Yes, that, yeah. that's a good point. Just to be thinking about. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good point. All right. Anything else, folks? Hearing no other comments, I make a motion that we adjourn. I move we adjourn. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much, folks. I appreciate Thank it. You. Have a good evening. Take care. You too. Bye. Good night, Bye -bye. everybody.